night marks the end of a perfect day. In fact, I might say truthfully, two perfect days. The great warmth of your welcome has reinforced the obvious fact that insofar as carrying on a campaign in Georgia to get votes, my visit to this state has not been exactly necessary. <laughs> and way down south in Georgia, he had some grateful hours at his winter home in Warm Springs. In the warm, magnolia-scented air, he gathered new strength to carry him on through the grueling campaign. Some real country fiddlers entertain him, while up north, Al Smith is making the Welkin Ring in Newark, New Jersey. Well, what a piece you'd like to hear. I'd like to have you play Soldier of Joy. New Jersey, and I state from this platform to my nationwide audience that the election of credit ticket is the best way to solve these problems, the best way to bring back prosperity, the election of Roosevelt, of Dan. <laughs> Off again to New England this time to wage the hardest fight of the whole campaign. And in Boston, devoted to Alfred E. Smith, the governor gets an unexpectedly enthusiastic reception. And in the great convention hall, many thousands gather to hear the words that fall from the lips of the man upon whose shoulders the mantle of the presidency is already visible. It is the climax of his campaign. Election day is at hand. In New York City, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred E. Smith make their way through crowds to their election district polling place. And if you observe closely, you will notice that Al is wearing his campaign war bonnet, the hat he made famous, none other than the Brown Derby. And we catch a glimpse, too, of Governor Roosevelt waiting for the return. And then election night in New York City. Surging crowds everywhere. Uproarious cheering as the news comes in early. Roosevelt has swept the nation, leaving... Mile of victory. 